and Jelani's my name is Jacksepticeye, welcome back to Dad of Boy. I just realized that the two things in the background look like eyeballs staring at me. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the last episode. I think we're coming up near the end. Well, I've said this a bunch of times. So I'm not going to say anything else. I keep thinking I'm coming near the end of the game, and then it's like, ah, you broke the tower. You need to go back. So let's see what actually happens before I, I go any further. We have the stuff we need now, technically. To travel to Yittenhamen. We need to go back to Midgard first. Why that refers to a modest example of Odin's thirst for knowledge. The time he spent nine days a dead man. Hung himself by the neck from Yggdrasil's branches, put his spear through his own side, and bled down into the Well of Destiny. He roamed the realms of the dead and plundered the world tree of its secrets until I think quite rightly it got fed up with him and sent him back to the land of the living. <laughs> Did I not mention he was barking mad? Yep, yeah, that is something that Odin did. Even my, like, very little understanding of Greek, or not Greek, uh, Norse mythology, even I remembered bits of that. Odin! Mad bastard! Oh, and I also remember the name of his horse is Sleipner, or Sleipner. I remember because I, in Final Fantasy, Odin was a, a summon that you could get. And Sleipner was his horse. It had six legs. Or maybe eight legs? Can't remember. Um, where are we going? The realm between realms. Oh yeah, we have to jump off the, the world tree. I forgot that that's what we were doing. Whoa. If you're thinking about hurling us all into the void, I hope you're quite sure. Wasn't it your idea? Find your own path, right? <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> Finding your own path in life is not really the same as jumping off a cliff. I still want to know what that is. Or maybe it's the top of the Jotunheim. Oh, is it the top of the mountain? The fingered mountain? It looks like, um... This is where Tyr stepped beyond. And the Unity Stone protected him. I hope you're right. Ready. Ready. Well, if this is it, lads. It's been an honor. Our faith head. Don't cut your arm with that axe, boy. Boy head and father. This is incredible! <laughs> you come down at the bottom of it, and Neil deGrasse Tyson is standing there, and he's like. The universe. I'll run oh, another branch. How can I be so nauseous without a stomach? Come on, that was great. Look. The tower. I knew there was something down here. Amazing. How do you hide something that exists in all realms? Cast it out of any realm to the space between. Nice. Clever old tear. So this You're stuff not then. On the other side? Can't be that. It's not like you go through Vanaheim to reach the Midgard Peak. But how do we use it? I'd suggest we look inside, but stay alert. Tyr's little challenges are never as simple as they appear. I have noticed. <laughs> first things first, the boy, incredibly optimistic. I love him. He he has that force of PMA going on for him. But, and so this is what the dwarves use then. The realm between realms. If that is indeed where that looks fucking amazing. If this is indeed in between the realms, so the dwarves are just using the gate that Brock made and just going in through different doors on the Yggdrasil branches. Technically. Or at least something similar to that. Can I light the braziers here? Well, oh. this is sparse. The pedestal. There's gonna be a fight here if you're giving me these. There's four doors. Oh no! It took the stone! Tower. It's absorbing the stone's energy. Something's happening! Is it moving? It's moving! Wait, if it I knows what to do. If I bring this the into the world. Its purpose. We're fulfilling to your spell. Won't that what happens allow now? Odin to get through? No idea, brother. But after that fall, I'm sure we're past the worst of it. You had to say something, didn't you? No, this is considerably well. There we go. Oh, ho. Oh, ho, 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 
Oh, oh, oh. Okay, take out the axe and do this one. Oh, I'm one of those strong boys. That is so beyond satisfying. Destroying dozens of weak enemies all at once. Also, crap, I have the... I have the amulet from Niflheim equipped. Can I unequip that real quick? Okay, nice. I want to have the vitality one again. I had that to cleanse the fog away from me when I was going through trying to get mist echoes. Now where are we? Oh, it's all frosty. Looks like Alpha. Oh, is it these? Oh. Oops. Get him, boy! God dang it. Nariuta! This doesn't freeze that guy as much as I would like it to. I'm watching! Damn it. Oh! You come in the wrong house, fool! Ah, gosh, dang it! Nariuta! I can't even see their health anymore. Okay. Can we get the freaking lights to come back on? Who didn't pay the bill? Is there another one? Oh, those nightmares. Can't do that to him. God, damn it. Can I have the lights, please? Okay, there we go. We back. This guy's tough. Me either, apparently. Oh, there he is. Crap, I could have blocked that. I could have blocked that as well. Fuck you. That was tough. I was tough. Where do you think it's taking us next? I do not know. Huh. I do not know. Green. What's Greenland? Oh, no. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Oh dear, here they come. Which is funny because Greenland is a real place and it's also part of Nordic Town. Because it was conquered by the Scandinavians. The Danish, if I remember specifically. <laughs> Take that, you some bitches! No, you don't! You just need more arrows! Wow, big boy! Big boy, want to do a bang, huh? I'll bang you real hard. Come on, boy. Whoa! Man, that does so much damage. Even though the axe isn't supposed to be able to do anything to creatures in hell, this thing still owns. Surely that's enough of that. Don't say, don't, don't do that. Don't jinx it, you f fuck. Uh oh. This won't be Shit, I just used all my frosty dues. Hi, buddy! <laughs> oh, I'm still able to do a lot of those dabs, though. Oh, I'm sick of these sons of bitches! <laughs> the boy is even breaking the fourth wall. Here, I'm a rock. Okay, Kratos, you missed. Oh, that does so much damage. Die! Barely even lost any health. Get him, boy. I'm not ready. It's fine. 
I'm not even doing this. The boys just standing there looking at him. <laughs> The boy was like, oh sure, throw one of these guys and a troll at us, that's fair. Stop. I think it's over. Right, right. Artemis. But where are we? Good question, but also, what are we? <laughs> An even better question, why are we? Pressing R1 after the first slash performs a second crisscross attack that launches enemies into the air. Whoa. That gets rid of which one? Oh yeah, I want this one then. I had 40k? Oh wait, this doesn't do much damage. This is a lot of stun though. And it is a 21 second cooldown. Mother of jeez. You don't have anything new. Why are you telling me you have something new? Go away! Am I allowed to leave now? Ah. Hey look, we're at the bridge! Look! We're back in Midgard. There's the bridge! We did it! The tower's back where it belongs! Now Tyr's travel room can take us to Jotunheim. To Jotunheim. How did you do this? Odin suspected the giant secretly possessed some remnant of primordial Jotnar creative essence. The stuff all realms are made of. The Unity Stone must have been fashioned from that essence. To trust an outsider with it, even Tyr, tells you just how desperate they were. And look, now we can finally light all the braziers and see what happens. Hmm. Another name. Loindu. <laughs> It's as if they've been made into a memorial to the Valkyries. Huh. That is something that I could easily do right now, but I have to go back and move the room to every single bridge. So I have to go back and watch that animation of the thing turning, which is really annoying. Also, hey, Serpy boy. Do you think the serpent's looking at this going, ah, so you figured it out, huh? Because the serpent is knowledgeable. It's wise. It's also time-traveled. So it came from the future back into the past. And the snake is part of Ragnarok. Because Fimblewinter starts and then it takes three years of Fimblewinter and then Ragnarok begins. But Ragnarok is a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's one of those things that everyone knows, knows is coming. It's always been coming. And it's something that even when they try and stop, they're still causing the elements of it for it to happen. So... It's, it's one of those things that's just unavoidable, so everything they do to try and stop it, they're still creating it. And almost in a case that they need to try and stop it for it to actually happen. It's a really weird prophecy. Um, but it's really cool, and anything that has time travel in it doesn't even need to make sense. I just love time travel. Time travel or space wormhole travel, anything like that. You guys do for me. So what do you find out there? I don't think you guys can do anything for me, actually, right now. Later then. Later then. What was it I needed, by the way? Okay, what's good? <laughs> I don't know, what's good with you? Evolve these things into deadly mist. Oh yeah, I needed mist echoes and Niflheim alloy. Another time. Maybe, yeah, another time. How about never? Moving and grooving. I don't know what we'll find when we get to Jotunheim, but we must cover giants, our tracks. Giants, giants, giants. ravens will tell them of the tower's restoration. And we mustn't let our efforts be to his benefit. Very well. Yeah, that's the thing. Now that the tower is actually back, that kind of messes it up because now Odin is able to get to the tower. Nice. Travel. This is it. Here we go. Hold on, wait a minute. This isn't going to work. What? There's no travel crystal. Oh! Here must have used his own eyes to refract the energy. It was his final failsafe. Why that eyes like him, Mimir? I've got an eye. One! Odin plucked out my other eye precisely to keep me from traveling. Sorry, lads. Thought that would work. Of course. What did Odin do with your other eye? He'd have kept it. In any of a hundred places, I'm afraid. We've come so far. There has to be a way. Look, bit of a long shot, but for years I had seas and grades sometimes brock lurking around in that mountain when Odin came for his visits. Maybe they know something. Mm. Brock and Sindri! There we go. Of course, another hurdle. There's always something. It's like, oh, we're traveling to Jotunheim. Nah, you broke the tower. Oh, we're traveling to Jotunheim. Nah, you've no travel, Chris. Oh, we need to get your eye. Nah, you only have one eye. <laughs> Who you fuckers know? Hey, guys. 
Question for you. Anyone know where we can find Mimir's other eye? Oh. <laughs> That's... I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, Odin asked me to... <laughs> he wanted me to build a... Oh, come on, man. He showed it to me. You see, and I... Brock, can you do the talking, please? The coin? Sorry. Will you... Excuse me? Who? Well, that was useless. You know, it was about that same time that Odin came around looking for me to build a statue with some sort of hidden compartment. Now, that not being a weapon and the Aesir being a bunch of pox-speckled cockers, I too saw fit to decline. But I know we got it built just the same. What was the statue? It's that one of Thor out there flashing his sack to the lake. The statue that the serpent ate. Sorry about that. Feeling much better. How are we supposed to look inside the snake? Inside? <laughs> <laughs> we better go see what the world serpent has to Yay, say about that. Yay! We get to talk to my Sherpy boy! Oh, hit the button. Well, lads, I don't know what lies ahead. But now would be a good time to make sure your gear is ready. Ah, uh, we are going into the end. To the horn. Wait, do I? I don't have to go inside the snake, do I? Kratos has already been inside one giant creature. You have to go inside Kronos to get the 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 Omphalus stone, the Omphalus stone, to create his uh the whips of Hephaestus, the electric no. things that he had. Ugh. Oh, he's asleep! Vocal warm-ups. <laughs> also, when Sindri was puking, he was like, Oh, it's all over my hands. Is that corn? Hi, serpent! Sorry to wake you up. I love the sound of this horn. It's like finding Nemo when she's talking to the whales. This is that you lost to us. Ah, uh, he thinks it might still be in his stomach. Um, and he's open to letting you go into his mouth to look inside. By the by, he's not wild about it either. Oh my god, I have to go inside him! Oh my god! This game is nuts! So, are we really doing this? Letting the serpent swallow us? You do not have to come. Well, I'm not gonna miss this. <laughs> I do have to go inside him. Holy shit. Also, oh, he's like Thor statue. <laughs> it sounds like he's saying Thor statue. Do you know where the Thor statue is? See the belly? Sure I want to know what the snake is saying as well. No. Because. Because there's no subtitles for the snake. There's even subtitles for when Mimir is talking in his language. But they've specifically oh, well, left out I've subtitles for the snake. Places, but this will be a new one. Yeah, I've never been in a judge belly either. How about you, father? Never one that was not trying to eat me. You really should expect that sort of response at this point. Oh my god! He even has like two sets of teeth! Ah! That's awesome! God. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, my arm is glowing. That's cool. Belly of the beast. 
funny. I, I can't see movie. anything. Dreams are nothing. I'm not afraid. It just reminded me of a way I used to feel when I was a child. Let's find that statue. Wait. So, Atreus, he knew about the dragon being in the thing. He kind of sensed it. He sensed something up above him. He sensed the dragon. Maybe he could actually just hear the voice or something. But then he also knew that the Valkyries were down there. He knew that there was a prison. And now he's saying he used to get- he used to have dreams of getting eaten? Huh. Smells not Remember bad to see the future, boy? Be. Bit like heather ale fermenting. Rather pleasant, actually. You're so weird. The brightness is really dark in here. What's that down there? <sighs> the water kind of burns in here. That is water, isn't it? Hi. Yeah. Whoa. Sony Santa Monica, you guys are bananas to Bear make stuff like this. Hammer. Ooh. Okay, there was a chest back there. I'm assuming I can get to that somehow. Oh, luckily there's a dock right here. <laughs> At least I won't have to fight anything in here. I see over there. Oh, it's going back. Why is it going back again? Stop! Here we go. At least now I have a second set of weapons that I can use to get places. So glad there's convenient yellow markings all over everything to help me know where I'm going. Ah, there we go. Return to me, Axe. Mimir, any idea where I can No, it's not like I can still see through it. That'd be handy though. So there's just a boat. It's gonna take you quite a while to dissolve this, Mr. Serpent. Mr. Jormungandy. Jormungandalf! There it is! Yep, that's an eye. Maybe you should stick that in my head, for safekeeping. Gently now, gently. Oh, hello, depth perception. Thank you, brother. You don't miss depth until it's gone. <laughs> awesome. Now we can use your head as a prism. Well, I wouldn't say I'm feeling whole again, but it's a right improvement. The Bifrost is intact. It'll serve. Then we have all we need. Finally, we're going to Yudna. There's no stopping us now. Laddie, have you ever heard the term tempting fate? Also known as jinxing us. Huh. Just wanted the chest hanging out, no biggie. A lot of gold inside your belly, also no biggie. Okay, please can we go to Jotunheim? I'm sick of all these hurdles in my way. It's very dark in this section. Should have turned up the brightness. I'm lost. Just follow the compass. Oh wait, now I can kind of see. So how do we get back Space is gross! Hold on! What's going on? What the? That scared the well, shit that out of me. Mildly terrifying. Maybe our presence is upsetting Jormungandr's belly. No, something is wrong. Oh no, something's attacking it. Is that What's happening to it? Nothing good. Is that Balder bitch Glad outside? Oh, tempting fate. What is that? We must hurry. Couldn't agree more, brother. Then paddle faster. You're a god. Use your hands. No, don't hurt my Jormungandr. Hold 
<laughs> oh, like father, like son. Something we did? No. Something else. A dead giant. Why would the serpent leave us here? Look. Hi. Was it you? Sister, right? Until we know for certain, keep a distance. The world serpent. What's happened here? We hoped you would know. You are far from home. I'm looking for my son. The two of you. You helped me see things more clearly. You do not know where he is then? No. But the woods and fields speak his name. I know he walks here in Midgard. When did you see him last? Long ago. Before you were even born. Why are you standing so far from me? Mm. What's wrong? Don't Something's trust happened. her. There! Oh my god! It's like watching Friday the Thirteenth or something. <laughs> I had a feeling that hurting the big snake would bring the two of you out in the open. Do you have any idea, any idea at all, what you have cost me? Oh, shut up! Go what? Go, go listen to my Chemical Romance or something. My boy. I'm here. Don't run away. Oh, I'm not going anywhere, Mother. I know that you're still angry. I know uh -oh. that how you feel hasn't changed, but I, I want you... How, how I feel? Oh, bad how choice I of words. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I've spent the last 100 years dreaming of this moment. I've rehearsed everything I ever wanted to say to you, every word, to make you understand exactly what you stole from me. But now, I realize I don't need you to understand anything. I don't need you at all. No, back off, Kratos. This has nothing to do. This path you walk. Vengeance. You will find no peace. I know. You... I'll deal with you later. But family first. Oh, <laughs> classes in session. This again. Okay, we're in it. I've learned a few tricks since last time. I can reach you. Crap, did that miss him? Shit. Fuck you. What? I hate you. Oh, because she's not able to fight. Just listen to me. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Ow. 
Ow! Does rot just mean root? Help me, boy! You might want to turn away, boy. This won't uh -oh. be pretty. I won't let you hurt him! No, boy. Fine. Stop! Ah! No! Now! Atreus! You're bleeding. Breathe, boy. Breathe! <laughs> Not my blood. <clears throat> Ooh. The mistletoe! It was in his quiver! I can feel this. Oh. That's why she wanted to destroy them. Oh. I can feel everything. Oh. No! <laughs> no! He's vulnerable now? Are you killable now? Dude! Dude! She's controlling the giant! What's going on? Is Freya trying to kill us? No. What Do you fuck? hear the wind? We are moving. That air. Wilder punch. The mistletoe? In the quiver strap, yes. Mistletoe harmed him. Freya said it was wicked. He's more than harmed. The spell is broken. He can be killed. I'm certain of it. It's all coming back now. Now he remembers. Oh, his knowledge is returning. Because the spell on Baldur is broken. <laughs> all right, let's do this, boy. Are you controlling that thing? Stay out of it. I can reason with him. No, woman. You cannot. He means to kill you. Oh, yes. show us what happened. This no again? Can. Where is he? I don't care if he kills me. I will protect him. I will not let him die. I'm such. This will all be over soon. Where is he? Then. Nice. You will stop this. Oh my now. God, that's so awesome. I blocked it at the wrong time. I feel. I feel. Ooh. Stop hurting my boy. My boy. Oh, he's ice now. So do I have to use these? Ah, shit. Wait, use this attack. Crap, didn't hit him. Uh. Oosh. Okay, that did absolutely nothing. So. Okay. Good job, boy. Oh, ho, 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 not today, Sonny Jim. You and your fucking rot! This can hold me! Go, boars! Okay. Go Wait, up, mate! Mother! I'm coming for you! Just try it. Just try it, boy. Oh, crap. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him! Yes! Get him, Trey, Trey! Wow! Ow! Oof. I pressed him too late. He's not doing that much damage though. Which is great for me. Okay, I 
can't do anything with that. I'm so concentrated right now. Ah, I keep pressing it too late. Go, piggies! Oh! Nice! Oh, come on, woman! Oh, now I'm starting like Kratos. Yes! Nice! Wait, there's no charge up? Ow! 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 Dude, this Atreus. is so cool! Atreus! I'm up here! I'm okay! I like that every time something happens, the first thing Kratos asks for is his son. That's adorable. Never felt so alive. Oh, now he's on fire. Oh, come on! What the fuck? Okay, he's on fire, so I need to use my axe. Oh, that does so much damage! I love it! Boom! More! More! Show me more! Hurt me more, snake! Boom! Oh shit. Crap! Oh, that's a cool effect though. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I keep pressing it too late! Shoosh! Crap. Fuck you! Crap! <laughs> That's so awesome! No. Oh shit! <laughs> Look at him go! I'll kill you. What the hell are you guys claiming this thing? I'm coming, boy! Oh, you guys are the Stay best duo. Away, you don't have to do this. Wow. There. Stop him. Nice. Ah. Oh, this again. There is boy, 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 boy. Uh, Fuck shut you. Up. Oh, no. Nice. <laughs> I got my two children by the feet. <laughs> nice! That's so cool! <laughs> this is so fucking epic! I feel like I'm in a superhero movie! Kill him! Kill him! Andreas! Yes! Before you die, I want to thank you. Both of you. You've done what even the All Father himself could not. I've never felt more alive. Ooh, poor choice of words. Oh, yeah! Oh yeah! What? Oh yeah, I'm I'm like mega strong by the way. Fuck you! Yes! Wait, now he's fire again? Oh god, he's just switching between them. Please, oh! 
Fuck you! Shut up, Freya! This is between us! Ow! Oh, crap. Oh, he's ice again. Now oh, he's firing again! Make up your fucking mind, boy! Oh god, everything's going into slow motion. The game can't even keep up. Screw you! He's almost dead. Yeah. Pretty easily, actually. Uh -oh. Ow. Oh, that's a great host move. That's nice. Shut kid. Help yourself. Can you, mother? No matter what, what I do or say, you won't. You won't stop interfering in my life. I was just trying to protect you. I was. I've made mistakes, I know. But you're free now. You have what you want. Try to find forgiveness. We can build something new. No. No. We can. Because I will never forgive. You still need to pay. Lifetime that you stole from me. I have paid. I have paid. But if that alone will make you whole, if seeing me dead will make things right, I won't stop. I know.
I love you. Jesus Christ! Why? Why do you even care? You, you could have walked away. The psychopaths here must be better than this. imaginable upon you. I will parade your cold body from every corner of every realm and feed your soul to the vilest filth in hell. That is my promise. He saved your life. He robbed me of everything. <laughs> everything. You were just an animal. Passing on your cruelty and rage, you will never change. And you do not know me. <laughs> I know enough. Does he? Boy. Listen close. I am from a land called Sparta. I made a deal with a god that cost me my soul. I killed many who were deserving. And many who were not. I killed my father. That was your father in hell. Is this what it is to be a god? Is this what it always ends? Sons killing their mothers? Their fathers? No. We will be the gods we choose to be. Not those who have been. Who I was is not who you be. We must be better. Well, guess we are the bad guys now. In her eyes, yes. But she could never make that choice. You finish this journey while I still have strength. That's ominous. Damn. I don't understand. I know saving her was the right thing. But she seemed all evil at the end. Not evil. You killed her son, lad. Her son. The death of a child is not something a parent gets over easily. But he was gonna kill her. She would have died to see him live. Only a parent can understand. So you'd let me kill you? If it meant you would live, yes. Look, there was no easy choice. For anybody, brother. But I think we can all agree you did the right thing. The world's a better place with Freya in it. Just yeah. give her time, lads. She'll come around. Back to Tyr's temple, then. One last time. Aye. Jotunheim awaits. That's... I guess that is Why true, because... Why we cost him? Mm. Odin must have convinced him that following you to Jotunheim would bring his cure. 
Lies, I'm sure. Why did Mistletoe break the spell? Vanir magic is powerful, but its rules are slippery and elusive. I'm sure it makes sense if you're a witch. Oh, but it's also bloody tragic. Balder was the greatest gift Odin granted Freya, the one thing she treasured from their marriage. She only hoped to spare him pain and spare herself loss. But such impulses can lead good parents to make terribly stupid decisions. <laughs> That's something, I guess, that... I mean, I get it from the gameplay st standpoint and the point of view, but I, I, th I don't think you ever get that until you have kids. Until you have your own flesh and blood and something that you will absolutely protect above all other things. I, like, I can't possibly know what that's like because I don't have a child. I can empathize with it and I can try and see it from the point of view, but I don't actually physically know what that feels like. And he said that the cycle ends here because, as Atreus was saying, this is how everything always ends. In, in Greek mythology, it was always about sons killing their fathers. That's, that was one of the, the points that the games originally had to put across, was that um, Zeus tried to kill Kronos, his dad, and then Kratos was trying to kill Zeus, his dad. And then all this stuff about sons killing their fathers that have been going along. It's very well written. I like it a lot. And the fact that Kratos does seem like an animal in this instance, and it's still like, dude, what the fuck? But her saying that you will never change, and Kratos was like, then you do not know me, because he is already way beyond the person that he once was. So he's already changed a bunch that even while he's still killing people, he's doing it for actual reasons now, and not just his own petty revenge. Jeez, that was tough. I mean, the fight itself wasn't. The fight itself was actually pretty easy. But I guess that that's kind of... It's kind of the way it's supposed to be narratively, because Baldur was weaker than, than he had ever been. That now he was mortal. Oh man, the tower ate the Unity Stone, didn't it? I wanted to fly again. Yes, that's a terrible pity. <laughs> Here's something I can't figure out. Odin wants to prevent Ragnarok. But the serpent's already been there and seen it. So hasn't he already failed? Fate's a tricky thing, lad. And Odin's just arrogant enough to think he can get the best of it. Fate is another lie told by the gods. Nothing is written that cannot be unwritten. On that, brother, you and the old father may just agree. Even if he can't prevent Ragnarok, he still hopes to learn enough details to influence the outcome. Remind me later to tell you about the wolves. Ooh. Odin thinks he can beat fate and change Ragnarok, even though the serpent's already been through it. Father doesn't think much of fate either, another lie told by the gods. So they have that in common. Well, see, in Kratos' standpoint, he has validity. Because he was supposed to die, and then he went back and killed his sisters of fate. So he literally killed his own fate. He killed fate for people. He destroyed it. So now anything is up for grabs. Now anything can happen. And I don't know if that's just in his realm, in the Greek mythology realm, if he destroyed fate, or if he destroyed fate for everybody in all realms. If the sisters of fate were over all of it. So that'll be curious to see, if they do do more games. What's up, dudes? I'm not here to talk to you though, I'm here to, uh... Head to Jotunheim. Finally, maybe, eventually. Here we go! I can't believe we're gonna see the giants! Well, if things work according to the plan, <coughs> go ahead and lock in Jotunheim and we'll be on our way. Probably. Shut up, Mimir! <laughs> it's gonna work! Oh yeah, because we have to do the thing through his eyes, I forgot. Boy, go ahead. Boy! Get ready. Oh, right. Come God. on, Mimi! Let's hope this doesn't cause you to explode or anything. Oh, hadn't considered that. Maybe we should talk about this a bit more. Nah, I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> ready! Oh, that's unpleasant! Now, boy! That's cool! I still 
No. Must be close. Well, what are we waiting for? Think it's far? We will see. Oh my god, we're actually gonna do it. A word, please, before we continue. Listen, the last thing you two need up there is a decomposing heat ruin in the moment. Why don't I wait for you here? This is between you and the boy. True. But if someone wants to fight... My lady sifts soft, perfect sloshers. <laughs> you done did it. Sorry. We had to see this. Oh, no. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Fine, damn it. Fine. Watch the head till we return. Oh, no. I can do this. No, no, I can't. Oh. Okay. Ready. Come. We're doing it. Whoa. Everything's all weird looking in there. We still don't know who called the World Serpent that time. Remember when I was going to save the boy? I was just thinking about that. We were going to save the boy that time and somebody called the snake. So I wonder if the person who called the snake actually knows how to talk to the snake. Or if they were just calling the snake to do something. Hmm, interesting. I might have just been... Baldur called him to try and beat him up. <laughs> but yeah, the snake has a bit more to do with this than it seems because the snake has... A lot of this game is about giants. And the snake is the last giant. Or at least the last giant in Midgard. We might find a whole bunch more of them in here. Look! We're on the giant's fingers! I can see the highest peak ahead! Right over there! We did it! We did! We did. What are you doing? I have nothing more to hide. Oh, that's nice. Can we go now? We're so close. You can see the scars on his arms. Boy. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, Kratos, you're becoming a good dad. Also, do any of you recognize this? When I went into the light in Alfheim and I was chasing the wife, when I was chasing Faye and she was leading me along, I got to here. I was actually on this bridge and then the boy pulled me back out. So I was seeing the future. Huh. Hmm. Boy. It's nothing. I just thought I'd hear voices by now. What is this place? Hello? Anybody here? Whoa. What is this place? They must have all come through here when they left Midgard. What was left of them. 
Have they carved statues? Why carve all these faces? What if this is all the giants that got out of Midgard alive? Not really many at all. Oh shit. Odin and Thor, ruining everything for everybody. Oh, he's writing. Okay. I was about to say, are we not going to get to find out what this means? Midgard was a dream of what could be if we shared and collaborated. Jotnar, Aesir, Vanir, Elf, Dwarf, and mortals most of all. It was beautiful. But not everyone is capable of sharing. Some believe anything uncontrolled is savage and threatening. And so we were mocked and tricked and used and then slaughtered. Odin and his tribe were barred from our realm, but it was not enough. The wrath of Thor and his terrible hammer have thinned our number in Midgard to the brink of ruin. There is no option but to withdraw, while yet any live to do so. Odin and Thor would have killed all the giants if they could, and they got away with everything. Also, it's snowing in the back of the journal now, which brought up a good point, is that he said at the end, right before he died, he said snow. And it only occurred to me then that no snow has actually been falling in this game. Snow is just on the ground. And snow falling indicates the start of Ragnarok, because that's Fimblewinter. Is it called Fimblewinter? Something like that. Fimblewinter starts, and then three years later of intense- It's like a Game of Thrones kind of scenario. Is that like the long winter sets in and then Ragnarok begins. So maybe that's what's going on. Where are they now? The giants came back home so they could survive. But I'm not sure they did. Are they all dead? Boy. Huh. Who's the guardian? Trico! <laughs> this place is cool. We foresee Midgard's fate. Overrun. A second hell. Neither Odin nor his dead may reach Jotunheim. The ways must be shut. The serpent and the guardian remained. They alone shall keep our hope. When doom befalls the indestructible, only then shall the guardian return. When doom befalls the indestructible, so when gods are killed, only then shall the guardian return. Are we the guardian? Is it Atreus? But it said only the guardian and the serpent remained. Until then, we await a better world, one without fear, without greed, without war. We wait for deliverance and justice. We wait for a champion. We will wait for word that gods grow good. Huh. Interesting. I should feel them, but I don't. This place is dead. What happened to them? Why'd mom send us here? One question is answered and two more take its place. Uh-huh. Interesting. So can giants see the future? They do a lot of prophesying and there's a lot of prophecies around them and they, they talk about the future a lot and the world serpent is a giant and he seems to know what the hell is going on. Wait! Father! Whoa! Something's happening! arguing with a bunch of giants. She... knew giants? Or she was a giant. That's us! The first time we met the World Serpent. But how? And our fight with Baldur! But that just happened. Wait. They knew everything that was going to happen. Oh, shit! The dragon in the mountain. The stone mason. All these drawings. 
This is our story. No. This is your story. But... What does it all mean? That I was not the only parent with secrets. Mm-hmm. You didn't know. She was a giant. There we go. Now it all makes sense. I'm a giant. Oh shit! That's true. That's why he's able. Why didn't you tell us? That's why he's able to predict things. She sent us here, knowing we would find this. But why not just tell us the truth? Her mother would have had good reasons. Balder was never sent to find me. He was tracking her all along, not knowing she was only ashes. If she had a plan for us, I trust it. Whatever it is. Besides, she hasn't been wrong yet. <laughs> Come on. We're so close to the end now. Yes. Yes, we are. Oh, no. That was Kratos dead. God damn. So there's our fight with Magni and Modi. And the boat from hell. And her death. So she was a giant. And the giants can predict the future. And that's why he was able to figure out like, oh. I think this is a prison, and I think there's a dragon up ahead. Well, he didn't know it was a dragon, but he said he- he felt something. And then he- he said he had a dream- what did he say he had a dream about? A dream about being swallowed. Oh, damn. Well, what was that? There was like a- a s snake? On Atreus' thing? It's Atreus and a wolf! This is all getting very interesting. Atreus, you have a way bigger part to play in all of this than we thought. So he's part giant, or part giant, part god. Jesus, so Faye knew she was gonna die. There's her, there's Look, her hand. It's mother's. She was here. She saw every step we took before we took it. Like she was always with us. Watching over us, leading us home. Let's finish it. So she, so all the markings that were conveniently placed for climbing, she put them there? No. That means she would have gone to hell and into, onto Thor's statue and all that kind of stuff and painted markings for us to take. So did she know all of this was going to happen before she even met Kratos? Dude, this game just got blown wide open. And now that I think about it, Baldur, when we got there, the first time you meet Baldur at the house, he says, hmm, I thought you'd be bigger. Because he thought that Kratos was the giant. Because he was looking for Faye. Dude, my brain is all over my ass right now. Nice! Whoa! There's so many dead giants! They are all dead! That's crazy! Jesus! Oh. 
father? No. We do it together. Son. He called him son! Not boy! back with her people. Goodbye, Faye. Oh, I love you, man. The Giants. They really are all gone. There's nothing for us here. So, I get that mother was a giant, which makes me part giant and part god. And part mortal. Oh, yeah. Right. I guess there's just one thing I don't understand. My name on the wall. The giants called me... Loki? Loki? No! the name your mother wanted for you when you were born. She must have called you that to her people. But why? A question for another day. Let us go home. Atreus was Loki? What the fuck? Jesus, man! Oh, it all makes so much sense! Because he's a... <sighs> oh my god, and it slaps you in the face all... Guess it all makes sense now. Why she want to end up here? Be with her kind? But did she know it was going to be like this here? Is this what she wanted us to see? Did she want us to tell the people? Or keep it a secret? I... do not know. So what should we do? I trust you to decide that. Oh. So, why do you want to name me Atreus? I know it can't be for a god. <laughs> no. He was a soldier. A Spartan. A great warrior? All Spartans are great warriors. We trained from birth. Our lives were discipline, duty, battle, and death. Life was grim, and we greeted it grimly. Mm. But Atreus of Sparta was unlike the rest of us. He wore a smile even in the worst of times. He was happy. He inspired us to hope that though we were machines of war, yet there was humanity in us. Goodness. When the day came for him to lay down his life in battle, his sacrifice saved countless others and turned the tide in our favor. I carried him home on his shield and buried him with all the honors of Spartan custom. His memory was a comfort in dark oh. times. Wow, you actually <laughs> told a good story. Oh, you missed it. Oh, that's so sweet. Dude, we got so many twists after twists after twists in this one. This is also a really clever way of doing credits. But I was gonna say, it slaps you in the face with that fact because as soon as Atreus finds out, or Loki, finds out he's a god, he asks if he can shapeshift. 
It was under our nose all that time! God almighty Jesus! And, and Loki is, well, Loki of actual Norse mythology, not the one from the Marvel movies. A trace of normal Norse mythology is the son of giants. But then he's taken in by Odin, I think. I can't remember. I need to look that up. I need to brush up on my uh, Norse mythology after this. Holy crap. What's wrong? Okay, he said we're going home. I want to see if we can go home and go to bed. <laughs> I understand if you want to go home, but I bet there are still some corrupted Valkyries out there that oh. can be set free. Some other help people. Maybe helping people is part of why mom sent us out here, too. I mean, what would Atreus of Sparta do? And what would Loki do? Huh. That's a weird name. I'm glad it's <laughs> yours. Atreus is a cooler name than Loki, but oh my god. I knew the boy had to have a bigger part and everything. I mean, everybody did. It's one of the big mysteries of the game. But to hear him be called Loki of all things, I don't think anyone was expecting that. Holy shit. There's still a, a bunch of unanswered questions. We don't know what actually happened to Faye. We don't know how she died. Um, or why she died. Maybe she saw in her mind that she needed to die for all of this stuff to happen. Maybe Ragnarok has to happen. Actually, Ragnarok does have to happen. But maybe she saw, like, Kratos and Atreus or Loki were the reason for that. And maybe that's what's going to happen in the next game is that Kratos dies taking on more of the gods. And then you get to play as Loki for another game. I don't know. We're big! Oh no, Mimir! Lads, am I glad to see you. I believe I've reached my limit for dwarven charm. What happened, Mimir? They took an uncomfortable number of measurements and then proceeded to bicker about the weather. Where do you want us to take you? How about the warm confines of anywhere bloody else? They took measurements? <laughs> oh! Continue exploring. Complete dwarven favors, free dragons, travel to Muspelheim and Niflheim. Find new items in the shop to get powerful equipment that will allow you to defeat all legendary corrupted Valkyries. Ooh, locations of all corrupted Valkyries have now been revealed on your map. Ooh, that's fun. Because that was the thing I was looking forward to after all of this. I'm glad we can actually just go back and do shit after the game is over. Ooh. He said we had to go home, though. I want to see if anything happens if I go home. Uh, let's return to Midgard! He said they were taking measurements. I wonder if they're going to build him a body. Before we return to Midgard, I should warn you. More time has passed than you want to realize. The snowballing began when you snowballed up. It's become something else. The stuff of omens. We're becoming a winter. Not just any winter. Great winter to span three summers, and when it's done, Ragnarok there it is. Begins. Ragnarok, from snow. Aye, snow, lots more snow, and then the end of the bloody world. <laughs> In that approximate order. Another prophecy. No, brother, prophecy doesn't expect this for a hundred more winters at least. You've changed something. Prophecy didn't count on you. It never does when Kratos is around. Again, symbolizing that he's able to change fate. Kratos is a much stronger entity. Not just physically, but just metaphysically as well. He's able to change. I'm telling you, it's Fimble Winter. I can feel there it, it is. in my scroat. This is the big one. Stop saying that. Oh, you're making me very nervous. It was bound to snow sooner or later. That ain't just snow and you know it. It's the end times. How Dare you make me the worst <laughs> reason. Guys, just discussing the weather. Bit of a cold snap lately. What he means is, Fimble winter's upon us, boys. The winner to end all winners. I can feel it <laughs> in my screw. Yeah, we... we heard. So, if you're heading home, try to keep moving. And also, to not die. Or if you're not heading home, same advice. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, let's head home. Let's let's finish it where it started. It's snowing. The world's different. The world's changed. Killing a god. That's what actually makes it all happen. Um Oh wait, what am I doing? I have a gate right next to my house, don't I? I saw it when we went back to get the blades. I don't need to take a boat back. That and I don't know where it is. Oh. Okay, it was right there. Man, this game got crazy towards the end. Yeah. Mimir, why do you have Bifrost crystals in your eyes? A loving gift from the giants. Since I used to do so much traveling between realms, they thought it would be more convenient for me than having a crystal I could lose. Did it hurt? No, because I wisely fortified myself with 16 cups of Billow Maiden's Ale. Got so inebriated, I tried convincing the giants <laughs> to put them in my nipples instead. <laughs> Almost talk them into it too. Can you imagine? Mimir of the Bifrost teats. <laughs> oh, those were the days. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll stop now. <gasps> I love him so much. Wow. I think he's my favorite character in the game. Wow. We're finally home. Feels like a lifetime ago. A bit drafty, maybe. It's a right improvement over having tree bark in your tadger. This game is gorgeous. Oh, there's a thing I missed. I think we have a complete Ooh. Of now. Awesome. Ah, finally home, boy. Don't put your blades back. Time to rest. I'm gonna sleep through winter. Please don't. That's three winters, apparently. Oh my God, we can actually go to bed. Can I? Oh. Okay. Sleep. Way ahead of you. <laughs> oh. Wait, what? What's that? The ball. Absolutely phenomenal video game. From start to end, that's one of the best video games I've ever played. So many of the elements all coalesced so perfectly to make it such a, a rewarding experience. Because there's a lot of games who try this type of thing, where they try the whole... Because this was extremely cinematic. This could have been a movie on its own. I mean, it kind of is. It's basically a, a Norse mythology movie kind of video game. If you change Kratos for Thor, bar the ending, like, that, so much of that is interchangeable. His axe even looks like Stormbreaker, or, or um, Thor's axe, or what's his name? Billy Ray something has an axe called Stormbreaker. It's like a, an axe hammer, so I guess it's not really the same thing. Um, Jesus, man, where do I even start? First of all, as somebody who is an extreme fan of the old God of War games, I love them. They were crazy, over-the-top, 
silly action games, and I even got into the story of them. I was one of the few people who even liked Kratos for what he was. He wasn't an amazing character, but I just loved watching him tear things apart because it was just so much fun to watch. I was extremely apprehensive about this new take on what Kratos was and the new direction the game was going and every time I saw some clips of it and everything I was like, oh man, they ruined it. They took away all the cool stuff from God of War. They took away all the like over the top killing giants action. And while there was still some elements of that in the game, it was still very far removed from what the old games were. There was, uh, there was far less violence, there was far less gore, there was far less of the like climbing titans and killing giants kind of stuff. You still had your elements of it. The Baldur fight at the start was so awesome. That felt like I was playing an anime game. It felt like I was playing a Dragon Ball fight or like in One Punch Man or something like that. Watching you fly through stuff. So they changed the scale of stuff in a way that made more sense for this game. It wasn't about sitting you on top of Kronos and pulling way back out to show you how big Kronos was and the tiny little pixel that Kratos was. They, they zoomed it in and they showed you how big that was from your point of view. And that's a really great change, I think. Because it sold a whole lot more of it, and having that handheld camera changed a lot more about the game than I thought it would. Because having that one long continuous shot kept you in it, and then watching Baldur punch you into the air, you went with Kratos with him. And then you kind of felt like what it was like to fall all over the place. So that shit was really awesome. And the direction they took the game this time, I think, was an incredible decision. It could have backfired on them completely, it could have been horrible, but having Cory Barlog at the helm, I think him understanding what Kratos was in the past, having him try it and do it in a different way, I don't think it could have gone any other way if he wasn't involved, or some of the, like if David Jaffe or Cory Barlog weren't involved, the people who were there at its inception. Ooh, Principal Cash, Christopher George, City Soldier, I knew that was Jeremy Davies. Nolan North and Troy Baker and Cory Burton was back to do the voice of Zeus. Um, Jeremy Davies is a, a really good actor, and he's in, he used to be in Lost. He was um, Daniel Faraday in Lost, and I really enjoyed his, um, his character in that, but in some of his later roles and some of the stuff that he's in these days is a bit more like menacing, or a bit more like quirky, and he nailed that character. He was incredible as Baldur. Um, but just the way all the elements of the game came together, the way the story was interspersed within not only gameplay, but very, very good gameplay. Um, the combat in this game was really, really fun to do, and they did pare back the, the traversal elements. It wasn't so much a platform game anymore, because I might play the old God of War games in like a stream or something, just to show you anyone who hasn't played them or hasn't seen them from start to finish, just to show you how different this was. Um, there's a lot less jumping around, but, oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. I think this might even be my favorite God of War game now. And I didn't think anything would top God of War 3 for me, because that game was just bananas. God of War 3 still has the best opening sequence to any video game I've ever played. Oh, the sound design was amazing. The soundtrack was phenomenal. Bear McCreary did a very, very good job on that. The performance capture was out of this world. Performance capture was one of the, some of the best I've seen in a video game. And it was used so well. Because not only was it like, oh, cutscene, let's see some cool acting going on and some cool story elements. The fact that they kept it with that camera and it just kind of came down and walked around the characters and keeping you in that moment worked so much better than I ever thought it could. And when it does cut, like when you're in the snake's belly and when you come through the doors and all that kind of stuff, when it does cut, it makes a bigger statement than when it doesn't. Oh my god, I don't know where to start, it's so good! Having... Going over Kratos' past and going over some of the stuff that he did in his past and some of the stuff that he regrets, they humanized him so well. They made you sympathize with him, they made you understand what he had gone through, they make you really buy that he is a different character, which I didn't think they'd be able to do without making it feel forced. And the fact that they only alluded to some of his past and didn't shove a whole trudge of shit that he had done. It's kind of like, if you played the games, you understand this more, but if you haven't played the games, it kind of leaves this mystery about Kratos and how much he has changed. And it worked really, really well. And then when he pulled out the Blades of Chaos, God, that was so hype. That was insane, because again, being somebody who has played the old games, you realize how big a deal that is for him to pull those back out. How big a change it is. 
And then the twists and turns and how they weaved him into Norse mythology and got to tell you Norse mythology while telling its own story was masterfully done. And also giving you those twists and turns and having Loki be in there being Atreus and all these different things. I was floored. And again, something that I think was the best part about the gameplay story elements of this game was what I brought up before about when Atreus changed. I'm gonna keep calling him Atreus. When he changed and he started to get, turn into a little bit of a douchebag and he started to get the cockiness of a god, that again being, is this what it is to be a god? That's exactly what it is to be a god. You become egotistical, you think you know better, you think you're better than all these other creations that have come forth. And you start getting into your head that when anything happens you're invincible. And that's what Kratos started to feel for a while. That's what all the Greek pantheon felt. That's what Odin and Thor feel, that they're invincible. That anything that happens, they're above it. They want all the knowledge. So that was the battle going on within him. And he was going through, basically, god puberty. And he was trying to come to terms with... It was, as Mimir said, he was a god believing himself mortal. And he was starting to attain his powers. So the powers were coming no matter what. But because he didn't think he had any powers, it was destroying him from the inside out. So that manifested itself as sickness. But then when he actually... Like, having actual control over him was such a genius idea. The fact that you had a boy button. Boy! Oh, I don't get to say boy anymore. Boy, boy, boy. Say it a few more times. The fact that you had a boy button, and then when it took it away from you, it made it... It made you abundantly aware of how important it was to have control over him. And he is by far the best video game companion that I have ever played with. I've played Bioshock Infinite, I've played The Last of Us, I've played all these other games where you have to do escorts and fetch quests and you have to do stuff with a companion who's helping you out. Atreus is far beyond any of these other characters. Ellie is a good character in The Last of Us, but when it comes to gameplay, she's kind of non-existent. She helps out, but you don't have direct control over her. So to have actual direct control over your companion is a ballsy move. But he also can't die. And at the time, you're like, well, why can't he die? That's a bit video game, isn't it? But then you realize he's a god. It, it actually works its way into the narrative. It, there's so many layers to it. It's like from a video game design standpoint, that's so well done. And then when he stops listening to you and he starts getting cocky and he turns into a douchebag, then you realize, oh, I have no control over him anymore. And then it actually services the story. It's not, it doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel like it goes against the narrative that's being played. The cognitive dissonance that happens between video games. One of them happens where Kratos, uh, an example of that on the other side is where Kratos is like, we're not going to go collect these bones. I'm not going to do that side quest. It's stupid. But then you can immediately take him and go do that side quest. That's kind of the dissonance between the narrative and the gameplay. And it kind of fell in that regard, but when Atreus was concerned, it worked really, really well. And I love seeing the little peek behind the curtain of how all these things are made. And I talked about, like, the loading screens and everything. The same thing happened in the final fight when you're in his hand. And he's like, don't you feel that? That's wind. We're moving. And then they kind of stopped talking. There was a few seconds of pause, and then they got shoved out because the game is loading the next scenario behind the scenes. So all of that stuff is just so well done. I love seeing the inner workings, the inner machinations of how games come together and how it all works together. And the visuals and the, like the shadows and the the shaders and the the occlusion and all that kind of stuff that goes on it's just fascinating to me and i think kind of having an interest in that not fully knowing how they're made like the coding and everything but how hard it is to do certain render elements like that playing a game like this really does open your eyes because there's a lot of stuff they're doing in this game in a in such a huge scale that is so beyond everything else it's it's bananas it's crazy I can't believe they actually pulled it off. Like, the giant snake all the time in the background. He doesn't just show up for certain elements and then he, like, fades away into the background and you just see him in the distance. He's there. He's in the environment. He's a living, breathing element in that world. And that's nuts. I love that they did that. They took so many ballsy moves in this game. And it all paid off. It's absolutely worth the hype that everyone was building up for. I am blown away by this video game. And that's why I keep saying that it's a very good video game. Because there's so many elements in this that video games do so well. And it marries so many different elements of so many other video games and movies and everything. Like, there's a lot of elements of The Road. If you've ever, That's like one of the very few books that I've actually read is The Road. And I love it. It's about post-apocalyptic father-son story. And there's a lot of elements of that in this. Um, and you can kind of see it 
or like there's a movie about that that ga or that book as well called The Road it has Viggo Mortensen in it, who's Aragorn in Lord of the Rings. It's a, it's a good movie as well. Um, but you can see some elements of that in it. You can see some elements of um, like The Last of Us in it. You can see very heavily influenced elements of Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Um, you can see elements of their own past, of old God of War games. You can see elements of so many different things in it. Like, the world design was very God of War. Um, and the puzzles and things like that. The, the gameplay itself feels a lot like... The, the, the world itself and the discovery of it and how you interact with it and the combat feels a lot like Dark Souls. Um, and the father-son journey and kind of the companion element felt a lot like The Last of Us. So, I'm, I'm sure they were influenced by a lot of different things, and there's so many other influences from so many other different video games, they were just the ones that kind of popped out to me as we were going through it. Um, and there's elements of, like, like, anime in it, um, like some of the fights and some of the stuff that um, Kratos was doing, like putting the shield down and hitting the ground, that's so Captain America from the new Marvel movies. So you can see elements of that and the way they're beating the crap out of each other as well. Um, Kratos versus Baldur was very Cap versus Bucky. So there's a lot of elements like that as well, like taking elements from the Marvel movies, and it didn't feel cheap, it didn't feel like they were ripping them off, it felt like, okay, that's a cool thing that you're doing, we're gonna be influenced by that and take it and make it our own thing, and it worked so well. And like these, all these other movies and games and everything are obviously drawing influence from other things as well, like Dark Souls draws heavily from old Zelda games, um, The Last of Us draws heavily from like, um, like other movies, Uncharted, uh, it takes a lot from Indiana Jones, different things like that. Um, but it, it implemented them so very, very well. And I'm, again, I, I, I could talk about this all day. Um, and gush about it all day. There's there's so much to talk about. I'd, I'd love to sit down and talk about this stuff with people who know video game design, and who know movies, and who know story and pacing. That, well, that's one thing I want to talk about as well, is the pacing in this game. 90% of the pacing in this game was very, very well done. It was just towards the end, it felt like little hurdles you were hitting kind of got in the way. It felt like like doing the stuff where you had to go to Jotunheim and then, like, oh, we're finally here. No, we broke the, the door. Oh, we'll go back here and now we got this thing. No, you don't have a travel crystal. Oh, well, where did we get it? Oh, well, we have to go get your second eye. Some stuff like that, if they kept it going a, a little bit longer, would have definitely started to slow down the pacing. So some stuff towards the end slowed it down a small bit, but it still felt... It still felt like the pacing was just really, really good. And giving you the ability to go off and explore as much as you want. Taking a break from that story, going out and exploring, then be like, well, I want to kind of want to know what's going to happen next in the story. You set your own pace. And I think I did a pretty good job of it in the series of setting the pace and showing you just enough of the world but also keeping on the story and keeping the dad and boy together. I think that was really good. And this is such a father, a, a good father-son story. They did it really, really well. Um, seeing Kratos go from someone who can't even put his hand on his son's shoulder and just calling him boy the entire time to the very end not even prompting, not even making a big deal out of it. There was a couple of times towards the end that I was very aware of, right before we got to the mountain. Before he took off his wrappings, he put his hand on Atreus' back. And there was a moment earlier on when Atreus was turning into a shithead that he wanted to do that, but Atreus ran ahead. So these are very, very clearly showing you elements of how the story is progressing. And then at the end, it was just beautiful. Great father-son combo. Oh. Atreus, are you ready? Yeah, but I had the weirdest dream. Fimble winter was ending, and Thor came for us, here at the house. It was only a dream. But it felt different. It felt real. It felt like... the future. Then we will worry about it tomorrow. <laughs> Today, there are still things we can do. Come. Oh shit, so you can see the future. So all that stuff he was talking about before, maybe he will turn into a wolf, maybe he's even seeing his own future. Damn. So that wasn't actually a thing that happened. The game didn't just end there, because I was, I was thinking, how are they gonna just come back, will it just come back and then it'll be normal. So that didn't actually happen now, that was a premonition. 
That was future sight on Atreus's behalf. Oh, that's clever. You clever developers. And I am... Okay, I'm gonna pause in case they start talking again. I'm very curious to see... How much of this game... Because then I started to realize, oh... Faye could see the future, because she was a giant. So she was drawing all over the place, because I was wondering, why are there just markings everywhere where we can climb? She drew them! She's telling you where to climb, where to go. And technically, anything you do in the game then, is the path that she foretold, because everything you do in the game, you don't actually have control over. That's all fate laid out before you, so anything you do, even if you go off to try and change it, technically, you're not changing anything, because that's what Faye drew on the wall. And the writing on the thing telling you to throw your weapon into the lake, that was her! Ah, boom! Damn! So... It is kind of sad we didn't get to see Thor and Odin- well, we did see Thor, but we didn't get to see them actually in the game, but I guess they're setting up for the next game. Ooh, very interesting. There's something else I was gonna say that now I can't remember. I don't know, I could talk all day about this game. And I will talk more about the game, because I don't- This is the end of the story. This is the- the technical end of the series. Ten episodes in and we finally reach the end. And I'm so glad people like the series, I'm so glad people like the episodes. I was worried about taking on a game that was this long, that's why I made the episodes longer. Now I'm glad I did, because it feels like you get nothing done even in those two hours. But... I'm just so happy with this series and how it turned out. It's one of my favorite series that I've ever done on the channel and I'm so thankful that you were here to watch it. So thankful for the developers and Sony for sending me the code and being cool with me uploading this game. I'm so happy with the pace I took with it, how much I explored. There's still more to do. I am going to end the official series here, but I will probably come back and do some stuff with side missions and everything in a separate kind of stream or a video or whatever. Um, but that does it for the story part of this game for now. I, I do want to do everything else. I do want to get all the trophies. I want to get all the the Valkyries. There's, I just want to play more and more and more and more. I don't want it to end here. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, punch the like button in the boy. Like a boy. And I boys all around. <laughs> whoosh, whoosh. But thank you, boys. And I will see all you boys. Boy! I couldn't end the series without saying more boys. Boy, boy, boy. Oh, I miss you, boy. <laughs>